So here we're going to be focusing on Dynameshing and getting subtools together and fusing them into one seamless Dynamesh that we can smooth out later. So it's a follow on from when we were placing individual components using references. So just getting sort of like a, a base mannequin that we don't care too much about the details, but more over proportions and volumes. So a really helpful way of doing that was just splitting up into individual components. Uh, and then if we wanted to make edits, we could just sort of rotate or move limbs or maybe resize them. So one useful thing about this is I can save that out and have that as sort of like a, a start project basis. So for any project, whether it's a small guy, tall guy, woman, whatever, I can use this as, as a, a start, start point and then add things as I please. So let's just pretend that um, we're happy with this and we start we start to... Uh, draw skin and muscles onto it before we can do that um, we have to merge it all together through uh, the dynamesh system so when we're adding all these objects when we started out you probably find that the geometry was uh, acting a little bit weird depending on the series you took in if i wanted to preview it it's just uh, shift f so the next stage if i look at it when i come to uh, sculpting so say with clay it's only going to sculpt these areas and not going to sculpt any more of my subtools. Um, there's no way in feature, there's no feature in ZBrush as of 21 where you can sort of like sculpt across two of them and keep them uh, together. You could potentially, let's say, come down to, uh, with the torso selected, you could come down to merge. And then when you press merge down, it's going to merge both the pelvis here as that subtool and the torso so we can merge down. It's an undoable operation, um, so just make sure you want to do it. I'm going to press OK. So now if I isolate this by clicking the solo button, I can see that these have been attached together as a subtool. But when in actual fact, they are a subtool, but they are individual components. So as I make edits here, they are. it does look like they're fusing together, but when in actual fact, they're only overlapping very, very efficiently. So that can sometimes cause issues later down the line. So say, for example, I was smoothing this area. You can see that they're smoothing as individual components in one subtool, um, and it, it sort of like causes a split. So the way we rectify this is by using the Dynamesh to fuse them together like you would fuse uh, normal clay. So we're inside of geometry down to the Dynamesh section you can see that it's toggled on and then so every time we make an edit we're looking at the uh, geometry now and now if we go to control and just draw outside onto the canvas and let go it's going to remesh and fuse those together so now that when we look at the geometry we can observe that it's one continuous um, seamless mesh that we can sort of smooth over and there's going to be no issues there so the one benefit for this workflow that we've done is like we created those individual masses and uh, we've created transitions that would otherwise be quite hard to make with a brush itself. So we can smooth this out very softly, um, but we've still got maybe we put some muscles in there, maybe we put some bones. So you can see that see the benefits of this sort of workflow. So that's one stage and you're welcome to add them at uh, different parts. Maybe you want to refine it a little bit more as we go on and then smooth it up uh, but our primary focus is to get it all as one continuous mesh so the way we can do that and the way I suggest is just going to your topmost subtool and making sure that this is all the stuff you want to merge so for example we don't want to merge this subtool so I'm just going to alt click it uh, I don't need it anymore so I might want to keep it for later I could just hide it with the eye icon uh, and we'll have a look at this. So that's the head. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the head and I just placed it below um, the item that we just hid. And the way I did that was by click clicking this, uh, this sort of like right angle. And that's going to put it down to the next one so that when we do come to the merge, uh, merge down, it's going to merge the next object below it and not the one we just hid. So I'm going to select the, the top one uh, and then click merge down this time I'm just gonna press always okay because it's uh, I'm gonna repeat this process and I don't want that pop-up to come and then I'm just gonna keep on pressing merge down to the extent where you can see it's engulfing all the all the assets and now when I come 
back to something like we did with the torso. If I come to Dynamesh and then hold control and draw a shape out, it's now all fused together. So um, the next process would be sort of smoothing these out um, just so it, it looks like a more continuous mesh and basically filling in any areas where the transi transitions aren't great. So uh, maybe using the clay brush and just filling it in ever so slightly. So now what you can see is going to happen is we've got all our primary forms that happened with um, the workflow that we used. And now we can just go over and fill and hold shift and smooth all the parts that are connecting together. So once you've smoothed out the entire mesh, then we can start thinking about uh, secondary forms and, and better silhouettes. So for example, necks don't really look like that. So what I what might, might want to do is put a, a trap in here so if I come and use the move brush I can get quite a large uh, brush size and then just start bringing it out maybe smoothing it and refining uh, putting muscles in with a clay brush and, and brushing in that direction so when we put all those together all those sub tools um, we actually saved a lot of time in terms of um, bringing out different limbs that you know everything's already there and we, we can be confident with the heads that we use that everything's in proportion um, and we can always come back to that at a late date just to make sure that it is so as you can see eight heads worth um, and then just coming in and smoothing out all the transitions so there quite simply um, using Dynamesh to combine and take to the next process um, how we're going to sculpt our, our skin and muscles one benefit that this has over things like uh, z-spheres so sometimes people like to use z-spheres um, z-spheres can can cause these sort of like strange cylindrical shapes that don't really match when it comes to anatomy like with anatomy and bodies we're talking about curvature so where in this in this process like we're, we're creating unique shapes maybe it's like a bicep or, or an upper arm or a torso and then when they combine together they, they make those natural transitions and cuts that you like to see when you when you see the silhouettes of a body so if we look at this character for example and the way that we've done it um, we've got already a natural quad effect that's happening we've already got um, the calves that are coming out we already have joints which are pretty much complete like the wrist and the ankles because you know we put that effort in at the start of changing that that initial shape um, and then the head is something that we can just refine at a later date and come in so a really great way um, and the way that I prefer for creating and starting off with uh, a character that has been fully dynameshed and created from scratch so you haven't used any source material which is which is the main way we want to approach things